The Aura episode had a lot of comments talking about redstone. Many of them brought up the fact that you can use the Material Reducer and Education Edition to learn that redstone contains uranium. When I was in the Navy, my classification was nuclear electronics technician. I've operated nuclear reactors, and many of my friends went on to work in commercial power plants. I understand the easy connection between we need an exotic power source and radiation. But uranium is not an unknowable substance. It's just a rock that gets hot. I'm oversimplifying, of course, but very similar to Earth science, people are not well informed of nuclear power, and it seems like anytime you need some mystical power, radiation just gets shoved in there. Redstone is a magic rock in a video game. You can say it is whatever you want it to be. But personally, I think using uranium in redstone is a bit of a lazy choice. I kind of just wrote it off and did not think of it as something that I should consider actually canonical for Minecraft. But then it came up in more and more comments and curiosity got the better of me, so I decided to actually take a look at the material reducer. I started with just the wiki and sure enough, there is uranium listed as well as some mystery element. But what's also strange is that it has carbon but no oxygen. And I think since there is one uranium for one carbon, the wiki says it's uranium methanide, which is a man-made ceramic used in fuel assemblies. I thought it was odd that they didn't use a real-life ore to get their elemental abundances from. If you're curious, here are some real-life ore. The uranium minerals in this sample are autonite and uranophane. This led me to look at the other blocks that can be reduced, and that was the beginning of my descent into the greater issues involving the Education Edition. As you probably already know from the title, this isn't going to be a game theory video on the implications of a man-made uranium material in redstone ore. It's going to be a video on the lack of effort that has been put into many of the features of the Education Edition. I'll start with the material reducer, and then get into some of the more serious issues. If you don't know, the Education Edition is a special edition of Bedrock licensed to educational institutions. They pay a subscription fee per year, and then there are lessons you can download that cover a variety of topics. You can get access to some of the education features in regular Bedrock too by enabling cheats and then turning on education when you create a world. But apparently my university has licenses and I have access to the actual Education Edition. You get access to all the atomic elements, which is something I would love to have in Java Edition. They have some blackboards, so you can have lots of text. A lot more space than you would have with a normal sign. A few blocks that help with building lessons. And then there are what I consider the main blocks. The lab table, which allows you to combine compounds and elements. The compound creator, which you can use to combine elements to make compounds. The element constructor, lets you make specific isotopes of elements by selecting the amount of neutrons, protons, and electrons. And then the material reducer, which is what we're going to talk about first before we get into the other issues. You can place a block into it and it will break it down into its constituent elements. The output usually adds up to 100, so you can just think of the number of blocks it gives you as the percentage of each element in that block. As a geologist, my immediate thought was to see what stone is. After all, I've made two videos discussing what possible real life rock stone could be. Maybe I could have placed it in there and gotten an answer in a few seconds. Silicon and oxygen. Basically, quartz. Well, there you go. Stone is just quartz. I wasted my time. So cobblestone is just quartz too then, right? Nope. You get a lot more elements. And actually the same elements if you look at magma or lava. Okay, so cobblestone comes from lava in the game. So I can justify why they made that choice. I disagree, but I understand. Two elements, eight elements. The elements I give are a bit strange though. The wiki says that this composition is the major elements present in silicate rocks. And that's correct. These elements are present in most silicate rocks. But these exact abundances are actually the average composition of Earth's crust, the eight most abundant elements. Well, that's cool. Lava has the average composition of Earth's crust. That's something we can talk about. What about obsidian? That comes from lava as well. Quartz again. In fact, the material reducer says all of these rocks are just silicon and oxygen. Listen, I know most non-geologists will see a rock and be like, hey, look, it's a rock, and then just keep walking. But these are real rocks. We know what's in them really, really well. Their names are for specific compositions of elements and minerals. Saying these are all silicon and oxygen is about as helpful as saying all animals are made of meat. It's the other details that make it what it is. Look, I'm pretty sure this is granite, but let's check.
back safe in Java, let's talk about the results. We can define most volcanic rocks by their silica content and the amount of their alkali metals in a graph like this. It's divided into sections, and each one of those sections is a specific rock. You might recognize a couple of the names down here. The graph has SiO2 for silica, but we aren't actually measuring the amount of quartz. It's common for geologists to work with oxide percentages because it's difficult to measure oxygen. So it's assumed that each element is balanced by an appropriate quantity of oxygen atoms. So this axis is the total amount of silicon plus some oxygen. If a rock came from lava or magma and it has small crystals and its concentration of silica and alkali metals fall into this region, it's rhyolite. If it has large crystals, it's granite. Here are our results. We have almost 66% silicon and about 4.1% total alkali metals. <laughs> Which means that our rock isn't granite. I guess I have to turn in my geologist card. It actually plotted into the dacite region, which is a fine grain rock. The coarse grain version of that is called quartz diorite. While we're here, I calculated the oxide percent for Minecraft magma. It plots right up here in this tracky andesite. So there you go, magma is tracky andesite. And I guess so is cobblestone. If you don't need to know the precise elemental amounts, you can also identify a rock just by its minerals. Here is Minecraft granite. Its texture has these variations that are supposed to correspond to different minerals. Real-life granite is composed of the minerals potassium feldspar, quartz, plagioclase feldspar, muscovite, biotite, and amphibole. All of these minerals have silicon and oxygen, but quartz is the only one that is just silicon and oxygen. But Mojang, you don't need to do any of this. You are telling me it's granite. You can just search what it's made of. Was this some intern's job like one afternoon and just nobody checked their work? Out of all the rocks that the material reducer breaks down into silicon and oxygen, the only rocks that I would say are correct are the actual quartz blocks and then just regular sand. Sand can be made of lots of different minerals, but quartz is very durable and very common. Red sand can also be quartz along with some other impurities, maybe iron. So it would be nice to have something showing that it was different elementally. Personally, I would just add a few percent of iron. The correct elemental concentrations for these rocks would look something more like this. Andesite and diorite are the same rock, just with different crystal sizes. Granite is similar with just a little bit more silica. I'll come back to gravel in a bit. Obsidian, I just made the same concentration as the cobblestone, lava, and magma. Technically, in the real world, obsidian would have the same composition as granite. Sand is just quartz, and then I added a few percent of iron to red sand. For stone, I'm making the bold choice of calling it limestone. I think that adds a lot more to talk about educationally and getting back to gravel. I'm saying that is broken down limestone as well, so they are both calcium carbonate. Quartz is quartz? Nether quartz ore is strange because they say that the ore block is just silica and oxygen. For the other ores that are in stone, the compositions are a combination of stone, which they say is silicon and oxygen, and then the element of the ore. They did that here, but they didn't use the composition of netherrack. They still used the composition of stone. I genuinely think this was a mistake that wasn't caught. The base netherrack block has mercury and a mystery element in it, so I corrected it here, so it's a combination of what they say netherrack is and then quartz. The material reducer issues are not limited to just these rocks. Out of the 38 groups of blocks that you can use, there are only eight that I would consider accurate, 15 that are varying levels of acceptable, and then another 15 that are just wrong. I don't want the whole rest of this video just talking about the material reducer, so I'm gonna go through some of the major issues real quickly, and then I'm probably gonna upload an unlisted video in a few days up on my Discord that kind of talks about the material reducer issues in a little bit more depth. The grass and mycelium do not include any elements from the visible soil. Dirt or soil is highly variable, but it nearly always contains organics, which are carbon and there is none. Freshly cut wood contains a lot of water. Only planks should be dry. I just don't like it. Cobblestone with some carbon added. Okay, sure. At least you get this one right. You have to smelt the item. It's not just iron in rock. Gold was okay, but now you have to smelt it. So now it's not just gold in rock anymore. Diamond ore is just wrong for the rock it's in. That's just my own nitpick. All of these ore blocks have the same composition as their refined resource block. You have to smelt the item. It's not just copper in rock. I would be impressed if you got these wrong. I don't really agree with the choices they made, except for glowstone. It has noble gases in it, which is what we use for neon lights. That's cool. These are all the same, but it's actually missing the dyed terracotta. So strange that they added glaze, but not dyed. And technically there should be differences between all of these. The elements are just to die. Nothing related to bioluminescence. Yes. No. There are many easy blocks that are just entirely missing. 
In fact, most of the new blocks after 1.12 have not been added. I thought they just stopped supporting or updating this feature, but then they have the copper ore, but they didn't add any of the actual new copper items. It would have been so great to actually look at the different oxide states and see that the copper is gaining oxygen through each one of these. Some people would call it educational. So I started looking through the Education Edition website, and this is when I started losing my mind. They have a blog that has been active regularly. I found this post that was updated just a few months ago, and it's an official lesson to help people design their own lessons, and they are guiding you through some ideas. Lesson four, all natural and synthetic materials are composed of chemicals, be they elements, molecules, or compounds. Besides the issue that nobody says be they in common speech, I agree with everything is made of chemicals, except elements. Elements are not made of chemicals. Chemicals are made of elements. The correct way to say this would say everything is made of elements, be they chemicals, molecules, or compounds. Personally, I would also add minerals in there because I'm biased. Many materials have similar elemental compositions, but different properties. Great. Zero issues with this statement. For example, most stone-like materials are composed of silicon and oxygen. Okay, stone-like is not a geological term, but I'll let it pass. Maybe you are specifically talking about stone-like materials in the game. Composed of silicon and oxygen. As we've already discussed, this is just wrong. You could change it to say most rocks contain silicon and oxygen, and that would be much better. Most rocks do contain at least some silicon and oxygen. Whilst living things are largely carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. I'm not a biologist, but I think this statement is okay. Except for the use of whilst, who are they writing this stuff for? Wait, I actually need to check that now. Okay, good. The material reducer is similar to real-world instruments used to measure the elemental composition of materials. Yeah, sure. It's a good statement to relate a topic to an educator or a student. And you saw earlier that you have to do a lot of work to find out what elements are present and you aren't actually breaking down the sample into its elements. You are measuring them in some other way. But that's a good example of differences that you can then go into more detail from. I don't expect Minecraft to mirror the real world. Discussing these differences is one of the things that makes it fun. And while we are discussing differences, there is another official lesson called Science in Minecraft. And the objectives are, be able to identify difference between the way chemistry, biology, and physics behaves in the real world compared to how it behaves in Minecraft. First off, it should be the difference or differences. Several of these lessons read like they were translated or not written by somebody who English was their primary language, which might be the case. And it's a small nitpick, but you are a multi-billion dollar company. Have someone check grammar. One of the examples listed is, in Minecraft, magnesium salts are created by combining NaCl and magnesium. What would happen if you reacted magnesium and NaCl in the real world? NaCl is the mineral halite, or table salt. I know we call it salt, but chemically it's an ionic compound. It's a salt. Magnesium salt, or Epsom salt, is also a salt, but it doesn't contain sodium or chlorine. Its chemical formula is MgSO4. They say in Minecraft, magnesium salt is created by combining NaCl and magnesium. But it's not. It's not in the base game. There isn't even salt. You created both of these for the education edition and then made a combination that is incorrect and then said, that's how it is in Minecraft. This isn't even consistent with other compounds in the education edition. These other compounds here are also salts that you can make in the game and you make them by adding the correct elements together. You make calcium bromide by adding calcium and two bromine. Why add magnesium salt and purposely have a wrong recipe? This isn't a limitation of the game. You took the effort to add these materials. You just did it wrong, almost seemingly on purpose to show that the game is different than real life. There is no other use for magnesium sulfide other than in this lesson. A limitation would be something like you are only showing elements that are above 1%. A limitation isn't that you just did a bad job figuring this stuff out and didn't bother asking anyone. There are plenty of already existing examples in the base game if you want to point out differences. To make things worse, there is no more information. There is no teacher's guide with answers. The answer to the reaction question, what happens when you react magnesium and salt in the real world, it's not given. And it's not an easy thing to look up. And I honestly don't know what they expect the answer to be. The answer might be nothing. They are both solids. If you just put them together, nothing will happen. If you dissolve the salt in water and then add magnesium powder, there is a weak exothermic reaction, which they don't warn you about, but I'm guessing they don't expect people to have magnesium laying around. I won't rob you of an actual exothermic reaction, so here's me burning some magnesium. 
I actually owe my channel somewhat to the failings of the Education Edition. When COVID became a thing, I was looking for ways of talking about Earth Science online, and I thought, surely the Education Edition of a game called Minecraft would have some Earth Science related material. But I couldn't find any, and that's when I started making my own geology videos. I've looked again for this video, and currently there are 1,365 lessons published. Out of the 95 lessons in climate and environment, there are two that I would consider earth science. But since Bedrock only got the locate biome function a few years ago, these lessons were before that, and they are only world downloads with a mesa and cave biome. No lesson, just make it up yourself. This is an official lesson provided by Minecraft Education. Under the general science heading, there are some lessons that I would consider geology or geography, but most of them are focused on programming and using something like water quality as the reason for the activity without really actually talking about water quality. There is one more lesson that I want to go through, and it's probably the worst one that I've come across. This is another lesson published by the official Minecraft education account called Everlasting Bubbles. The learning objectives are students will identify the elements needed to create carbonation. Students will apply this information and analyze the environment at Soda Springs and why travelers found it so unique. Students will observe what happens when the carbonated beverage is immediately poured out and observe again after the carbonation has gone flat. They will research how carbonation occurs and why it happens naturally at Soda Springs without going flat. The Soda Springs they are talking about are the ones along the Oregon Trail in Idaho. There's a Tom Scott video on it and I'll link that below. In real life, the generic term soda springs refers to a spring that has naturally carbonated water. The water comes from deep enough that it's under pressure and some CO2 dissolves into the water. The CO2 can come from a variety of sources, and when the water comes to the surface, there is less pressure, and so the CO2 comes out of solution and makes bubbles. Just like when you open a soda. <laughs> <laughs> Under performance expectations, it says the natural spring water, as it moves toward the surface, comes in contact with sodium carbonate in the earth. I spent way too long looking for information on this. Literally days. I found several scientific journals that discuss the springs and there is no mention of sodium carbonate anywhere. The actual current understanding is that the CO2 is a mix of varying degrees of crustal and mantle derived carbon. There is a soda springs in Texas that does get its carbonation from sodium carbonate though. Did they just Google Soda Springs and not realize that there are many different Soda Springs and towns named after them? The next part, which creates the bubbles near the surface of the water? I think they just mean near the surface, like when the water comes to the surface. Soda Springs will not stop bubbling until all the sodium carbonate comes in contact with the water. Again, I think this means the springs will keep producing carbonated water until all of the carbonate is dissolved. But there is no sodium carbonate here, and this is a bit oversimplified even for kids 6 to 13. Our canned or bottled beverages have captured the dissolved carbon dioxide in the form of bubbles. The captured carbon dioxide is not in the form of bubbles. It's dissolved in the liquid. It's bubbles when it's not captured anymore. But once it all comes in contact with oxygen, the bubbles will stop. What does that mean? This would happen if there is no oxygen at all. This is just a pressure difference. And that's it for the lesson. There is no accompanying text. There is no world download. You don't do this in Minecraft. It doesn't talk about anything in Minecraft not even trying to relate it to bubble columns. There is only an external link to the Oregon Trail website talking about Soda Springs, and that doesn't give any information either. Why is this even a lesson for Minecraft education? This lesson is particularly bad, but nearly every lesson I looked at has issues. When I started looking at the material reducer, I thought the issues would be just limited to that. But the more I looked, the more issues I found. I have not come close to talking about all the issues here. There are more issues with the material reducer, the compounds, and the lessons. At this point, I cannot believe anything that the Education Edition suggests is a product of any of these blocks, and I have to second guess everything that a lesson tells me. When you call yourself Education Edition, there is a certain expectation for the quality of information you are providing. You have an obligation to educators and students, and people are going to believe what you present to be true. Educators might not know the technical details of a subject, if you buy a textbook, you expect the content to be correct. By presenting false information, you are doing the opposite of educating. So how do we fix this? The biggest thing that needs to happen for all of the issues in the education edition is providing a list of assumptions to educators. If you are saying a grass block is only giving the elemental composition of grass and ignoring the visible dirt part of the block, that needs to be stated and not on the educator to figure out or make assumptions. The issues with the material reducer isn't a bug. It's working as intended. So this needs to be corrected through a feature request or Minecraft ideas submission, which is why I've done both of those things for the rocks. If you want to leave comments on them, the links are down in the description. Mojang makes this effort to add endangered animals into the game and bring light to them. 
Why do they not do the same thing with the rest of the natural world? The education of earth science has fallen so far behind other topics that we have ended up with generations of people that are nearly illiterate when it comes to how the earth works. Having a basic knowledge of these sciences is necessary for understanding climate change, resource management, water quality, and conservation. Education on where we get the elements to make all of our things is incredibly important and just not taught in primary and secondary schools. Mr. Moyang, I know you're watching. You have this amazing audience and the ability to be something great, but you put in such little effort and then just drop it. The issues with the material producer are inexcusable. If you can't fix this, hire me and let me make this right. This isn't a new feature. It's just adding and changing values in a table. I'll fix the materials and then quit before you have to pay me. You're on your own to fix those lessons though. And also, your website is abysmal. How do you have over 1300 lessons in different languages and no ability to search by language? How come all the lessons are alphabetized, but the subjects are not? How come AI water quality is listed as climate and environment, but if you go to climate and environment, it's not there? But you know what is there? Alaska math alignment guides. It's not flagged for climate and the environment. In fact, Alaska math alignment guides is in every subject. World languages, Alaska math alignment guides. Animals, Alaska math alignment guides. If you click on a topic before it's done thinking, it ends up loading everything instead, even though animals are still selected. I know there are people at Mojang that actually care about this. Fix these issues. I know you can do it. I was originally going to go into detail on all of the issues I was finding, but honestly, this video would have been hours. It takes so much longer to try and disprove a statement than it does to just make something up. It's disappointing and aggravating to find all these mistakes. I hope these issues are eventually fixed. I want people to succeed and actually enjoy learning. I hope you have a nice day, and I'll see you all next time.